One question that I get asked all the time is, Skylar, what is the best light for photography? And this is a little bit tricky to answer. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I use speed lights and strobes in my everyday workflow, but that was not always the case. When I learned photography, I learned with LED lights. LED lights are a fantastic way to learn photography. It's the fastest way to learning photography because you can see exactly where your light is, how it affects your subject, your shadows, and so on. There's really no learning curve. It's really, really fast and easy to use. Because of that, I recommend you get an LED light. Now, before you check out out of this video, because I said beginner, let me just tell you, even if you are an advanced photographer, you still need an LED light. There's so much stuff you can do with LED video lights that you cannot do with strobes. And I'm gonna touch more of that in a second. Now, if I have to recommend one specific light for uh, video light for photography, I will have to go with the Ulanzi LC150B. Now, uh, as a disclaimer, they did send this light to me for review, but they didn't reach out to me. I reached out to them and asked them if they can send it to me so I can check it out. And we're gonna open this box and check out the light. I truly believe this is the best light you can get for the money. And I chose this light for different reasons. One of them being the price. This light only retails for $187. And if you use discount code SKYLAR10, I'll put it in the description below, you can get 10% off. This is a bicolor light. That means the light goes from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, and that is super important. I'll get to that in a second. And we will turn this light on and I'll show you exactly how bright it is and all that. So the price is fantastic. The color, uh, being bicolor, it's also fantastic. And then another thing you should look at is the brightness. It is so bright. One thing that I'm really looking for when I buy LED lights is to be Bowen's mount. I do like to modify my light and it's so important to be able to control your light. That's why you will never see me do a review on one of those square panels. Those are pretty much useless. They are so hard to control the light with those. There is one single scenario that I do use those panels, and but that's for a different video. Most of the time, I like to use Bowman's mount. I like to use soft boxes. I use, like to use snoots. And I'll put in the link in the description below a whole bunch of accessories that I think would go great with this light that's so versatile. And Bowen's mount accessories are so much cheaper than, you know, other accessories. Now, what do you get in the box? In the box, you get the light unit itself. You get the cable that you get to plug in. You get a remote. Yes, it is remote control, even though I never really use the remotes. There is one scenario when they really come in handy, and that is for when I do flat lay and my light is way up high on a C stand. Then if I wanna dim the light or increase the light or change color temperature, I can use the remote and I don't have to bring down my light. Other than that, I pretty much never use the remotes. And then in the box, you will also get a reflector. Now, let me tell you, this reflector is not the original reflector from this light. And that is because I took this light to test it out at the friend's house. We did some product uh, video shoot and I forgot my reflector over his house. So this is a different reflector, but that's the good thing about this light because it is Bowen's mount. It's Bowen's mount compatible with all kinds of accessories. So I have a whole bunch of this around the studio. I can still use the light. So, but just so you know, it comes with a reflector, but it's not this exact one, but it looks just like this one. To turn on the light, you have this handy dandy red button on the back of, on the bottom of the light. And you turn that on and there is our light. It is very, very bright. I'm trying not to shine it straight in the lens, but you can see as, you know, super, super bright. And this is at 79%. So let's see. I'm gonna try to see if I can do this in here without burning my table. On the back of the screen here, I'm hoping my phone records on top there, you have the color temperature. So the color temperature, you might be able to see it here on the table with my phone. Uh, it goes from 2700 Kelvin, which you see it's a very, very orange light. And it goes to 65 Kelvin, which is a very, very blue light. Now, I know the light doesn't look that bright on the back, but that's because I have a huge softbox with the LED light in front of me. That's what illuminates me. If I would turn that off, you will see it's super, super bright. Then you have the dim button. This is where you can turn it to 100% or you can go all the way to 1%. Then you have channels and groups. That's for if you have more than one light, you can put them on different channels and groups. You have the fan button. 
and this is if you're doing video and you need it to be super, super quiet. The fan is not loud. This is the fan is on and I don't think the mic would be able to pick it up. It's super, super quiet. But if you need it to be even quieter, you can push this fan mode and it's silent, complete dead silent. Now, when you use the fan mode off, then your power gets reduced to 10%. You cannot use it more than 10%, even though 10% is still very, very bright. It's because, you know, you don't want it to overheat your uh, light. So there you go, fan on, fan off. Now this light comes with built-in effects. It has 11 effects and to turn on the effects, you just click this mode button and then you can scroll through the effects. Let me just turn here so I can see what I'm doing. This is the lightning effect. It has fireworks effect. It has flash effect, breath effect, and so on, cop car all kinds of effects that is, you know, very handy if you're doing video. For photography, you are not going to need any of these effects, just the light. Now, as a color temperature, let's see, if I go down to 2700, you can see how that is a very, very orange light. And then if I go to 6500, that is a very blue, cool light. So you saw the way the buttons work on the back of the screen. Let's put this onto the stand and let's take a look at the remote. The remote comes with batteries already installed in it, so let's turn it on. And, oops, turn it on and off, there you go. Just push the button. And then you have your temperature control here. You can go cooler. As you can see, I made a very blue light. And then you can make it warmer and you can go down to, you know, the 2700 Kelvin. Then the intensity of the light, you have these two buttons the, with the sun. This is, you can make it brighter. So this is at 100%. Let me just make it cooler to the daylight temperature. Daylight temperature is 5400 Kelvin, if you do not know that. So to increase the power on your light, you go to up sun to dim the light, you go with the down button over here. You have the uh, fan button on the remote as well. You can turn it on and off. Again, that will dim it to 10% when you turn the fan off. And you have your channel and group over here. Very easy to use. You also have instructions on how to use the remote printed right on the back of the remote. So there is no confusion about that. The light comes with a manual and very easy, straightforward. I don't think you need it. It's very intuitive, very, very good light. I cannot recommend it enough. The CRI on this uh, light is 95, which is fantastic. If you are not familiar with CRI, CRI stands for Color Rendering Index, and it's basically measured the quality of light, how it renders colors. 100 is the best, and that is uh, natural sunlight, and then anything over 95, it's really, really fantastic. Over 90 is good, anything under 90, I wouldn't buy. Now, higher CRI number renders beautiful, beautiful colors and tones across the whole color spectrum. So you will get nice, vibrant images. Now, one example that I like to give for people that don't understand CRI is if you go into your closet where you're using household lights, tungsten lights, and you look at your socks, you will not be able to differentiate between black and navy. And that is because it has a very low CRI and the colors are not rendered properly. If you take those two pairs of socks to the window light, even though it might not be any brighter, you'll be able to clearly see which one is navy, which one is black. And that's because sunlight does have a very high CRI, it's 100, so we'll get very accurate, beautiful colors. Now, why do I think you need video lights? Well, this is how I use my video lights. Obviously, I use them for video. More often than not, my clients ask me to do a couple of seconds video of their product just because they wanna post it into their Instagram or Facebook. That is really, really easy to do with an LED light. You buy a turntable. If you need a good one, I can put one in the description below. And you just point the light to the subject, let the subject spin around in the turntable, and there you go. You have a few seconds of video of the product that really didn't take you any time at all. And now your production um, value, it's increased because you can do small clips, not just photography. 
LED lights are also very important if you're photographing portraits. When you photograph portraits, if you use speed lights, you're usually in a darker environment and people's pupils, pupils are dilating in the dark. So then when you take your portraits, you will see mostly pupil and you will not see their beautiful eye color. So I like to use LED lights for portrait because then you can see all that beautiful color into the customer's eye. And really the eyes is the you know, window to the soul. So you should not dismiss that one. LED lights are also very useful when you photograph babies. You do not want to startle them with flash photography. And same thing for pet photography. I have dogs, I photograph them all the time, and I would never use a flash on my dogs. They will get spooked and, you know, LED lights are so much easier for their eyes and they don't get scared by the flashing lights. So babies, portraits, pet photography, always use an LED light if you have one. LED lights is also very useful when you need to do long exposures, light painting, and maybe we'll do a few tutorials on those if you're interested. So as you can see, this light is super, super useful and very, very affordable at only $187. As I said before, you can use my link in the description below and use coupon code SKYLER10 to get 10% off. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.